opposite colored bishops. Now this is a classic game. I believe this was played by uh, GM Alex Kotov uh, back in the 50s, say 1958, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, this is just this is just awesome. So what we've got here, black is up a pawn. Uh, black has a passed pawn here on b3. And black has a much more active king. So that's a lot of factors. So let's say white just starts off with bishop c5, trying to uh, maintain his pawn here. So this is a lot of factors. I mean, with the pass pawn, an extra pawn, and the more active king, black is doing very well. But it's opposite colored bishops, right? So that means the chances of, of a draw have skyrocketed. So let's take a look at what black can do here. You know, to, to open lines. I mean, that, that's the name of the game, really. In, in opposite colored bishops, you got to open lines. And similar to, to just same colored bishop endings, if you can create two passed pawns on different diagonals, you're going to be sitting pretty. So let's check out how we can do that here. So black's going to start with g5. This is crazy, right? This, you're probably thinking this is the last move you would ever think of. But what black is doing, he's actually going to use one of white's pawns as a shield, for his king. And, and so what I mean by that, if H takes, black has achieved his aim already. He's got a free pass. He's going to push this pawn. And white's pawns are actually blocking out his own bishop. Can't even cover now. Uh, the, you know, it's blocked by his own pawns. So uh, H takes, you know, that's going to make it easy on him. So what about if F takes? Well, now it's going to be a similar idea. That the bishop is going to be blocked from protecting the H pawn. And so let's check that out. He's blocked by its own pawn on g5. And so now black is going to sacrifice another pawn. I just want to, I, I want to make it clear that opposite colored bishops in games are very drawish. And so if you have an advantage, a lot of times you should just go ahead and sacrifice a pawn to open things up and to create more activity because, you know, you're not very, you're, you're, you're really not risking much. You know, let's say you sack the pawn and it ends up not working out. Right? It was unclear and, and it doesn't work out. You don't have enough to win. Your opponent probably won't have enough to win either with just one extra pawn and opposite colored bishop in game. So it, it's a very interesting material uh, imbalance essentially. And uh, you know, sacrificing a pawn to push for the win is really not nearly as risky in, in an opposite colored bishop in game because the chances of saving a draw are so much higher. So with this d4 check, you know, Black's sacking two pawns here. He's trying to get it done. Uh, with this d4 check, the point is very simple. We're trying to uh, control, we're trying to keep our pawn on b3, pretty much. The, the pass pawn on b3 is very important because what Black is trying to angle is have a pass pawn on b3 and a pass pawn on the h file. And those are going to be very far away, very distant pass pawns, and definitely on different diagonals, which means White's bishop is not going to be able to control both. So, d4 check, let's say white captures, and now black is, he's trying to, uh, you know, get some of his money back, right? He invested two pawns here, he, he wants to get the h pawn, it's not about the pawns though, he wants to get a pass pawn, right? So it's not about counting material, it's about assessing the, the uh, imbalance. And so with king to g3, we can see that uh, bishop here, you're blocked by your own pawn, and, uh, you know, now... Uh, even though the material is the same, this example should really, really illustrate to you how, just how important it is to have the pawns on different diagonals. The material is exactly equal. Okay, black's king is in a more active place, but material is equal. But because white's, uh, black's bishop here it can control both of these pawns on the same diagonal, black is going to have an easy time winning. He just leaves the bishop there. Black's going to roll his pawn down. Meanwhile, uh, while black's bishop can control both of white's pawns, it's, it's the opposite for white. White is going to have to use his king here to control one pawn, and he's going to have to use the bishop to control the other, which is not going to work. And so let's, let's go back to the example. I just want to make that clear, though. Having the pawns on a different diagonal is so important. The fact that black has already stopped this pawn here, and, uh, you know, of course, he can stop this pawn, uh, that's huge. That's huge. So let's go back to the example here. So in this position, uh, what we looked at there was a bishop to e7 and, and trying to, I don't know, hold the pawn or whatnot. Uh, now let's take a look. What if white, you know, he first he wants to tie down this pawn and maybe he can use his king, for example, to help this pawn. 
Uh, black is going to go ahead and snatch the H pawn. So we've got a pass pawn. We've got the bishop controlling both of these pawns. Right? So this is good stuff for black. And uh, also black has the... His pawns are on you know, different diagonals. Distant pass pawns on different diagonals. And so now uh, white, you know, he's got a dangerous pawn here, but it's okay. We just, we just keep the bishop here. It's no problem. And so let's take a look. You know, black is just going to start jamming with his pawn. Got to use the king to back it up as well. And in this position, even with material equality, black, white has nothing because his king is, is glued to this pawn. Right? His bishop can't, can't protect um, both of these squares. It's, it's just not going to work. So black with h2. And simply here, I mean, black is just going to go collect the pawn. He's going to collect this pawn, and he's going to win easily. You know, white is just stuck. He's completely stuck. If we change this position, let's say white, let's just change the position slightly. Let's say white got this pawn to d6. White would actually be winning here, right? So it's just those little tiny, those tiny details, so important. If white got this pawn to d6, now the bishop is no longer able to control both pawns. The pawns are on different diagonals, right? You know, controlling d7 and controlling g8 is not the same diagonal, right? So in this position, black would actually be losing. I mean, white just simply deflects the bishop, queens, and that's all she wrote. So, uh, just to finish this example, after h2, you know, we can see with the bishop controlling the pawns on the same diagonal, black is just going to mop it up. The king, just go ahead and take the g7 pawn. Why not? And that's, you know, I, I think it's going to be pretty easy to win from here on. We're just going to march the king up. And um, let's see, we'll capture. We just got to get the king up here. Got to be careful you don't stalemate the other, the other guy's king. But in this position, you know, with the bishop, we'll just throw a little check. And that's going to be a nice checkmate. So let's look at another defense by white in this position. All right, so we're going to start off with the same... The same sacrifice by black, g5. Same thing, d4. Got to protect your babies, right? Those pawns are like your children. You got to protect them. <laughs> you know, you can't just give them away. So, in this position, black sacks two pawns. He's now down a pawn. And uh, let's say he goes after uh, the pawn here on h4. So white is going to try to, try to you know, get some counterplay. And so let's say... You know, instead of pushing g6, as we saw in the previous example, what if white plays king to d3? And so this is a little bit more dangerous because now white's got his bishop here uh, covering this guy, covering the, the, b, the b3 pawn, and he's also getting his king more centralized, and maybe he's going to make some threats with his own pass pawn. And so black, you know, he can snatch a pawn. That's cool. It's not going anywhere. And so what white is trying to do here, he's going to use his king, to blockade the H pawn, and he's going to use the bishop to blockade the B pawn. So let's check this out. First of all, black, you know, this bishop is a monster. It's blockading white's pawn and controlling uh, just, just such incredibly important squares. And so now what black is going to be going for, you know, unfortunately king g3 isn't really going to work too well. This check, you know, it's very annoying. I mean, it's kind of like, well, I just want to push the pawn to h2, but it's not that easy. So black's going to have to be a little more creative than that. So black uh, can go first uh, for the pawn on d4. White can try to hold that pawn. That's a good idea. However, the bishop is just kind of stuck in the corner. It's very limited. It's limited by its own pawn, you know, as, as well. And so, for example, king h2. This is very important here. So black has got to be patient. First of all, we can play king c2 because we're attacking the bishop. It forces uh, bishop a3. But black has got to be careful. If he plays b2, this is a draw. White sacks the bishop, and now he's going to collect a pawn, and that's a draw. Right? So black's got to be careful. You've got to be patient. Right? We've got to tie up all the loose ends in this kind of position uh, with such limited material on the board especially. And so b2 immediately would throw away the win. However, bishop to e6, excellent. So we block, the, we block white's king from approaching our pawn. And after d5, again, if you take this, this is, uh, this is a draw. We have king h3. White's going to win the pawn. There's nothing to do here. I mean, we just we take the pawn. After king to a2, white just keeps the bishop covering this pawn here. 
and uh, that's it. You know, he's going to end up sacking it and, and achieving the draw. So, a little bit of patience by Black. Got to be prudent here. We know what White wants to do. He wants to deflect our bishop away from this square. But, you know, if Black is careful, we don't need to take the pawn. This guy's not going anywhere. Simply bishop to d7, and Black's going to have an easy win. Easy win. Say d6. There's no way for Black's king to, to go after this pawn, and we'll simply play something like b2. White will have to sack the bishop. And because the queening square for the rook pawn, the queening square for the h pawn on h1, is on the same color as our bishop, they're both on light squares, uh, black will be able to win this position. So let's take a look, just to re, you know, examine that, that, uh, that example in greater detail. So in this position, let's say bishop b6, uh, we'll take a couple moves to set up here. And uh, so, you know, we, we got to be careful here. We got to be careful. Because we, if, if we start here with black and we play h3, this is going to allow white to set up a blockade. should be a, a very familiar concept to you now. Uh, when you're thinking opposite color bishops, you got to think, I got to win. I can't allow the blockade. <laughs> because here, I mean, h3, it seems like a, an honest enough move, right? I mean, it, it's like uh, we got these past pawns, right? We want to push them. But we don't want to push them on the same color as our bishop. Because now white just plays king h2, and it doesn't matter what black does, let's say king here, white can just put the bishop covering g3, and we have an elementary blockade, even though black has connected pass pawns, got an extra pawn, all that stuff, it's an easy draw for white. I mean, all he has to do is just keep the bishop covering g3, and it's an easy draw. So, to keep going here, uh, for black... You know, first things first, he wants to activate the king. Second, now he wants to put the pawn on g3. And uh, this will be similar to an example we looked at uh, um, a few examples ago, <laughs> uh, where uh, black has got to kind of walk his pawns up with his king. And uh, the focus should be the pawns are going to work on the dark squares. Black's bishop is going to work on the white squares. And so just that simple. It's a little bit trickier with the pawns in the corner like this. Let's say white tries an active approach, trying to go after these guys. Uh, it, it is trickier. You know, let's say, for example, g2 here would be a big mistake, right? We put the pawn on a light square, bishop g1, uh, or, or I'm sorry, bishop to uh, bishop b6, for example, controlling that. I mean, is, blockade might come up. It might happen. And so for black, let's waste a few moves here and go with g2 finally. And so now with white's king in the way, uh, it's not going to be that easy. And so we try to stop it. This is a nice example. So black does end up playing g2 here. Um, and the, the reason that white's king is so far away is how this works, right? It's not, it's not quite possible to set up a blockade. And so, but it is possible for white to throw some tricks at you. You know, even though we got connected past pawns, it's still a tricky position. And the fact they're on the side of the board, you know, the edge of the board... It, it makes it significantly trickier. <laughs> and so, uh, basically, White's idea here is straightforward. Uh, Black's king is kind of in a jam. If he plays king h1, we just take the pawn, right? And uh, also, with White's pawn here on, on a7, you know, Black's bishop is tied to this diagonal. We can't move off that diagonal. Uh, for example, we can't play, like, bishop here to c8 to guard our pawn. We can't do that. All right, we, we've got we got to babysit White's pawn here on a7. So this is just a, a nice trick. This is something to remember. This is a neat trick. Uh, here for Black, we play Bishop to f3, and now we're we're employing some zugzwang techniques. You know, if now White's king is cut off on these squares, and that means if we can just get his bishop, so that the bishop can't move either, we're going to be winning. For black. black, white is going to be forced into zugzwang. So how we're going to do this exactly? You know, the idea is that if, if white had to play king g5, now we can just make our queen and, and you know, move on with our lives. We win the game. So here, let's say bishop, bishop c5. Black is actually going to queen. And you might be thinking, well, this is crazy. What if he just takes it? Of course he's going to take it. Now, now we take, and this is draw. You know, what's the point? 
Not so fast. Not so fast. We got some jokes, right? So after we make the queen, white captures, we have king to g2. This is really cool. And you see these, these kind of ideas, usually in the corner. They're usually stuck on the edge of the board uh, and in games like this. But the idea is that black gives up a pawn, but now he forces Zugzwang. All right, so where this came from, logically, when we put the bishop on f3, we recognized that the king, white's king, was kind of stuck. You know, he doesn't have any moves now. If he moves away, you know, it's going to be a lot easier for us to promote. So, logically, black just needs to uh, make it so that white's bishop can't move. And that's what we've done here. So with this move, king g2, just fantastic. Uh, white is in complete zugzwang. You know, let's say he tries to give away a pawn. We'll just take it. It doesn't do anything. Uh, let's say he tries king to g4. You know, still, so black can't take the bishop, right? This would be a draw. However, after king to g4, we just bring the bishop back. We throw this check. And now we're controlling the critical g4 square. And in this position, white, black just needs to waste a move, essentially. If it was white's move, he would be losing. So black just, we need to waste a move, but we need to keep the bishop controlling the g4 square so that white can't keep his king... Uh, eyeing the h3 pawn. So let's see bishop d1, and white can pretty much resign. Uh, this is a pretty neat trick. This is good to remember. You know, giving away that pawn here to force Zugzwang, I, I like the idea quite a bit. And uh, with bishop on d1, you know, just taking away the g4 square. White can't move his, you know, he moves the king away, I mean, we just take the bishop and promote. And uh, on the flip side, what else can white do? He can't move his king, he's got to move the bishop, Where, where's he going to go? You know, we move the bishop away, and now we just play h2, and we're going to promote, and, uh, you know, that's going to be it. So a, a neat idea of, of sacrificing one of those pawns to force a Zugzwang. Hello, you've just watched a free preview video for one of the premium videos in our shop. If you've enjoyed this free preview, please consider buying the full version to help support our team and to help further the chess community by allowing us to release more free content on YouTube. If you would like a 15% discount on any of our videos, simply select the video and type in the code YouTube15 at checkout. Also, if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to our channel. It's 100% free and you will be informed of all the free previews and videos that we release in the future. You can do so by going to our channel at youtube.com slash online chess lessons and clicking the subscribe button. We hope you've enjoyed this video and we appreciate your support. Thanks so much.